Hello, everyone. My name is Jen. I'm a holistic nurse practitioner, and I want to welcome you to my symptomless masterclass. We're going to talk about how to heal autoimmune disease, autoimmune symptoms. If you're not even sure if you have a diagnosis yet, you're just like, I feel kind of off. And when I Google autoimmune disease, that resonates with the symptoms and things going on that resonates. And this is based on the research. I'm going to talk about some subjective things before we get into the objective data. But I want you to know that all the information I'm sharing is from my anecdotal evidence, my experience of healing eight different autoimmune and chronic illness conditions from my body and from my doctoral research. So the information presented here is legit. Several of my clients that I've already worked with are on this call. They know it works. And I want to encourage you without a doubt that your body can heal. One thing I am positively sure about in my medical career, in my nursing profession, is that the information is out there. As a doctorate of nursing practice, so nurses who have their bachelor's are registered nurses, nurses who have their master's or doctorate are nurse practitioners, and nurses who get their doctorate or PhD are the nurses who are like, you know what? There's some research out there that's not being implemented into practice. And my job is to take what's being studied and put it into practice. And one of the largest lagging areas of medicine right now is autoimmune disease for women and for men. I, I'll talk about men here in a second. So if you're a dude joining in and you're like, is she going to even address? I'm going to address you. I promise just a couple slides and hang out with me for a second. I have something quick and easy to tell you. And then for the rest, I'll talk to the gals. Um, but for women, you know, we're <clears throat> invalidated, we're not recognized and our symptoms aren't in how to treat. And I promise you when I struggled, let me get to the next slide with eight different autoimmune conditions. This wasn't even me at my worst. I was too embarrassed to take photos and I wish I would have, um, you know, my doctors didn't have answers for me. Not only my endocrinologist, my rheumatologist, my primary care, all wonderful, wonderful humans who wanted to help me but the system had failed them. Their education had failed them. I was seeing functional medicine providers. They weren't able to help me either because there's a large basis of functional medicine that people generally want to help you, but the information and the paradigms taught have an agenda. Even, you know, we know our Western medicine is very insurance pharmaceutical heavy. We're, most of us are not new to, Hey, there's some money games going on in there and that's happening in functional medicine. And whether it's supplement companies or testing companies, there's some functional medicine practices that a lot of you, I know on this call, cause I've talked with you one-on-one -on -one, you're like, I've been in functional medicine. I feel burnt out. I've spent the money, but I want to invite you into a different way of healing. One that what I'm going to offer you in terms of solutions and healing is pretty simple. It might need, you might need some guidance. It might take, it will definitely take some time. It will definitely take patience, but I promise you that if you are struggling with autoimmune disease, your body can heal. And a large part of that is going to be the subjective, the soul part, the energetic part. And we will also cover the objective, the scientific, the physical. Okay. So you are here. You were called to this masterclass. You were called to this replay because you have symptoms that rob you of your joy, of your vitality of the life that you're meant to live. Your doctors haven't been able to help, not because they're bad people. Again, the system and the education have failed them. And don't we all know that in, the information on the internet is so conflicting, right? Like when I started my journey, I just think of my day with nutrition. Like in the morning, I was following this thought of nutrition. In the afternoon, I was following this form of like intermittent fasting. In the evening, I was following like a high protein, high keto. It just was, I was so confused. I was taping, taking apple cider vinegar shots, which I don't recommend um, in short. And for my gut health, yet things were getting worse. And I was doing these parasite cleanses and eating keto and I was getting worse and worse and worse. There's so much information out there. My hope today is to simplify it for you, back it up with some solid research studies and give you the hope that your body can heal. And then if you need help, you know where you can go. I also have um, inspirehealthbygen.com. I have a podcast. So I'll talk about some steps for us today to work together or get some support. But if you are just ready to get your toes wet, start with little baby steps and bits and size pieces on your own, check out my podcast. That's a good place to land as well after this masterclass. Okay. You're ready to heal. You're here because you, I mean, you're at this replay, you're at this masterclass. There's a million things you could be doing because your soul has led you here. And I firmly believe that when I 
started to heal my body from eight different autoimmune conditions. Yeah, I think so. I was. Oh. I turned the oven on. She's acting weird, but you see if she needs to come on. Second. If you can unmute or if you can mute, I can always keep up. But thank you. Perfect. Um, when I was healing my eight autoimmune conditions before, you know, I was in regular medicine, in functional medicine, and I literally heard from like the voice of my soul, fire all your doctors and just sit here. And then I had a crazy thought. I was like, if people that write books about this and have documentaries can heal their body from cancer, why can't it be true for autoimmune disease? And that my soul speaking to me, that belief, that thought led me to years and years and years, almost a decade down the road of anecdotal evidence for myself. One second. For anecdotal evidence for myself and then protocols that I developed to help other people along the way. And now my doctoral research. So there's a special offer at the end for this masterclass only. You have to join, and I'm going to give you a special coupon code to use at the end of this. So if you're watching and you're here, please, please, please stay to the end. I have something special I want to offer you. Okay. So before we get to the research and the data and the heavy statistics, I want to offer you something that it is true that when we are so down and out with autoimmune symptoms, when I was 25 years old, I thought that my symptoms were just, I literally said this to one of my friends. I said, I think I'm just getting older. I was 25 years old and I was accepting symptoms that were really limiting my quality of life. I thought I just needed to stop going to the CrossFit gym. I thought that I just needed to slow down in life. I thought that that did, I had all these things in my head, right? That it was just what I needed to live with. But this isn't about you anymore. One thing that I know for sure, hindsight is 2020, is that my purpose was sparked and I went through the healing journey I went through to help others. You may or may not be someone who goes out into the world and changes the medical model for women and men living with autoimmune disease. But I promise you that God puts you here on this earth because you have something really important to do. And the fact that you have symptoms, the fact that your body is bringing you pain or bringing you agony or bringing you discomfort or bringing you something that you want to look at, the fact that you have a symptom automatically means your soul is telling you you're meant to live for more. There are people, and I know you know this, who live their life and who feel totally fine. And you're like, I'm pretty sure that what I do for my body is like a lot more than they do for their body. But Aunt Debbie, who drinks, you know, a six pack of Dr. Pepper and smokes a pack a day, feels great. And I'm like struggling in bed and I eat vegan or I eat paleo or pick your perfect whatever, right? And I use Infrasol and I exercise and blah, 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 blah. I take all my supplements. Your soul, if you have a symptom, is telling you you're meant to live for more. That's frustrating and equally encouraging, but I promise you, if your body is talking to you, there's more for you on the other side. So here's one truth. If you're listening to this and you're like, I don't know if I have autoimmune disease, Jen, I just kind of signed up for this because you posted something that resonated or I don't know how I, I just clicked on the thing and here we are. Even if you just have the symptoms you're ticking your way into autoimmunity. I am not a fear-based practitioner. Any hypo or hyperthyroidism, you can ask anyone on this call who has autoimmune thyroid disease. And I know there's a couple of you. Your symptoms started, my symptoms of Hashimoto started a decade, 15 years before with hypo hyperthyroidism. There's inflammation is like a highway that splits off. And we don't have to be fear-based here. I just want to empower you with this information that oftentimes, especially as women, we brush minor communications, minor symptoms from our body under the rug. But later, if they keep going down the highway, they're going to split off to autoimmunity or malignancy cancer or, you know, heart attack strokes. There's multiple pathways, but your symptoms are here for a reason. I had a client not too long ago come to me just to optimize her health. I don't get many of those hardly ever. I was like, you are a dream. How fun. We just get to optimize. And she's like, I don't know. I just want to feel better. We got our blood work. And her lab said she had autoimmune and she was like, oh, of course that makes sense. And what she had told me versus her labs and what she's living as her experience were very, very different things. And this is so many people. We're living with symptoms that we don't even realize we can heal and are weighing us down. So how do we heal from symptoms of autoimmune disease? 
three things. First, we must recognize what autoimmunity is. Autoimmune disease, I'm going to talk you through exactly what's at play. There's always a root cause condition. Never, ever, 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 ever does your body one day wake up and attack itself. What about genetics? Okay. Genes have a very small part to play in autoimmune disease. If there's inflammation, if there's all the things I'm about to talk about here in a second, if all of those root causes or all of these perfect storm epigenetic factors are at play, the gene turns on and off. The fact that everyone in my family on both sides, for the most part, especially my dad's side, has autoimmune thyroid disease. I didn't, I wasn't born with autoimmune disease. I wasn't born with autoimmune thyroid. It took about 20, 25 years of my life for me to develop it because all of these things I'm about to talk about had to be at play. So when we recognize what it is, we don't feel victim to it, right? It's not just genetic. It's not just bad luck. It's not just whatever your doctor is telling you. You don't have to take a medicine if you don't want to. You don't have to have a surgery if you don't want to. We understand how we got here. And then we adapt the three pillars with the research studies, which if you are a research nerd, hang on to your horses. I'm going to show you some really great information. Okay. So what is autoimmunity? What is, what are these perfect storm factors that we have to get to, right? Number one is chronic infections chronic infections. So I think the pandemic in the last few years has been a good example of this. Like some people would just get COVID. I like have to remember what platform my mom, I'm like, okay, this is my own video. Like I'm not going to get censored. You can't even say the word COVID anymore. It's crazy. But some people you are wondering what I'm drinking. <laughs> this is not wine, tart, terry juice. And, um, Grapefruit spindrift with a little bit of lime. It is so good. It's going to help me sleep like a baby. Okay, moving on. Chronic infections. With the pandemic, with COVID, some people just got COVID and they were like, I don't know, I had a runny nose and I lost my sense of smell. Some people got it and were super, super sick. Some people got it and let's pay respect to the lives that, you know, they, they had a lot of things at play. A single virus is not going to kill you. They had something, they had their perfect storm to where, they lost their life and it was a big deal, right? But these viruses, these chronic infections, they do different things in different people. So Epstein-Barr virus, I'm going to talk about it. It's the most common. We can have HHV4, HHV6, we can have Cytal Omega. There's all these different viruses now long COVID, um, bacterial like strep infections. We have parasitic infections. We have fungal infections. There's chronic infections that have to be at play with autoimmunity. Everyone with autoimmune disease in my clinical experience has at least one chronic viral infection. Now we don't have to be freaked out by viruses. I promise I'm getting over one right now. And I remember the first virus I got after I healed my autoimmune disease, I was like, Oh no, am I going to relapse and spiral? No chronic viruses. They become chronic because they have these perfect environments, which of all the things I'm about to talk to you, you about next where they stay in the body. They can live in the liver, the thyroid, hello, autoimmune thyroid. They can live in the gut. They can live in the nervous system. They can live in the connective tissue. They can live in the joints. So chronic infections have to have a perfect storm to where the immune system is knocked down for various reasons. And the infection takes advantage of your body and nestles its way in. Viruses have four to five stages in the body, right? Stages three, four, five are where we have symptoms. Stages one is just like a cold stage two. It goes dormant stage three. It's reactivated stage four. It's in the nervous system stage five. You're really freaking sick. Okay. So chronic infections, number one, number two, nutrient deficiencies. Um, when I grew up, I love you mom so much. You're the best. She now cooks all symptomless and bakes and my parents are on board and this way of healing saved my dad's life, reversed his, reversed his Parkinson's. He's a walking miracle as, as of myself, but my mom made good cooking, if you know what I mean. And she did good bacon too, if you know what I mean. I mean, we always had fresh brownies and dinner was like pot pies and cornbread and like we ate good, right? But we didn't eat well. And if I wanted a snack, I would get in the cabinet and get Cheetos or Nutter Butters and if you wanted a sandwich or, you know, a quick lunch, you had some bologna, some mayonnaise, um, a piece of bread, a glass of milk and some chips. It's just like what we did. Right. But come to find out someone somewhere, somehow something made up nutritional guidelines that don't actually serve us. And in the research that I'm going to show you here in a little bit, there are foods that feed 
chronic infections. There are foods that fight chronic infections. Most of us have some pretty intense nutrient deficiencies because what we're taught and told to eat as normal is not normal. When we get into the nutritional part and I'm helping you understand food as medicine, you're going to think, wow, I am going to be so weird. But what if, imagine if you were just born today and you lived, let's say in my family, where my, over the years, this was not overnight, myself, my fiance, my parents, my sister, everyone close to us eats in this way. Took about a decade to get here, right? But what if you what if you were born today and you just saw this as your normal and then you went around and you were like, why is everyone else eating this way? And that was the abnormal. So just think about your perception of normal, what's normal, what's real for nutrient deficiencies, hormone imbalance. Oh man, this, I could talk about so many things here and I'm gonna keep this succinct for you. Couple of things, our environment, the water we drink, tap water, the air we breathe, the food we eat, what our animals are pumped through and pumped full of, which is synthetic hormones, our plastics, our xenoestrogens, our fragrances, the Febreze. You can't even walk into like a public restroom without like, I have to hold my breath. <laughs> like all of the things that the xenoestrogens and xenobiotics that are getting on our hormone receptor sites let alone birth control and men, I'm going to chat with you here in a little bit, let alone, I see a large community of bodybuilders because, Hey, I respect you and athletes. You're going to take boosters to support your performance. There are better kinds than usually what you're offered. And I'm happy to talk with you all about that, but hormone imbalance can be from so many different things. But once your hormones start to decline or imbalance, your immune system takes a really, really big hit. And then also, you know, having several children, having children, the research is clear that breastfeeding and childbirth protects women in a lot of ways. And then also it can over time, this is an argument whether you have kids or not, this is just information that if you, you know, you've had two, three, four or five kids and you've noticed that autoimmunity, like when you're pregnant is great because your progesterone levels are really high. And then with each kid, you feel like you get a little bit more sick because the ovaries and the uterus wear out and they have trouble producing hormones. So we'll get all into this, but your hormones are a really, really big part of it. And it used to be that women it used to be really only had women had autoimmune issues. And then it used to be, it was around menopause because right now our world is really toxic. We don't have to live in fear. We don't have to hide, you know, under a, I'm thinking of like what on SpongeBob, what she lived under, like the one lived in a snow globe. And was it Patrick that lived like under a rock or something, whatever I digress, but you don't have to live in fear and you don't have to live under a rock or a, a fishbowl or whatever in SpongeBob to protect yourself. You just have to know how to get those things out of your body and how to support yourself. And we'll talk about that. And if you have autoimmune disease, you have hormone imbalance always. It's the viral issue too. Viruses, chronic viruses sit on receptor sites. Who's had COVID in here? If you've had COVID, then you know that after the virus, you felt a little off, right? I remember when I had it, all of a sudden I started getting these really bad hot flashes and I was already supporting my hormones with plant-based bioidentical trochies. And because of COVID, COVID, the virus likes to sit on our receptor sites and block our hormones. Now there's a way to heal that. There's a way to eradicate that, but viruses, hormones, your immune system, autoimmunity, they are doing the tango inside of your body. <clears throat> Nervous system dysregulation. There's a lot of ways to put this. Think emotions, think trauma, think stress, your body, you have a physical body and then you have an energy field that hovers above and around the body. You are a soul. You're an energy. You're your essence. You're not going to have a physical body forever, but when you die, you will have an essence, a soul and energy that lives forever. That energy is here in this body, right? When you go through something hard, when you go through a trauma, maybe you stubbed your toe and all the kids laughed at you or a loved one that you trusted did something really hard and it caused a lot of pain. Your nervous system is like a circuit board. When that trauma or that infarct is so intense and you can't process it, the, the, the circuit board flips and an organ stores that. So if it's your inability to speak, your thyroid or your throat energy center, throat chakra, if that's your thing, is going to store here. 
If it's a heartbreak, your heart, your shoulders, your mid back is going to store it. If it's something relative to your power, you feel disempowered. You feel like you don't have a choice. You just feel squashed down. Your solar plexus, which governs your liver, your digestion is going to hold it. If it's something that happened to your reproductive energy centers, you know, that um, your, that's your sacral energy center and those reproductive organs are going to store it. The, there's just, there's always an energy center correlated with the body part and the nervous system is if it's dysregulated, if there's trapped trauma, if there's stored emotion, if there's something left to be cleared and the evidence, the research I'm going to show you, it's really clear. We have tools to clear energy from the body. And when we do that, it helps our symptoms hundred percent of the time. Most people that go through my symptomless program notice they are like, Oh, I didn't realize like the food's important, the hormones are important, but I didn't realize so much of what I've been carrying is energetic. For me, my very first energy healing session was, um, what's it called? Um, I'm going to forget it's, I cannot remember what it's called right now, but essentially they test meridians on you and it's involves muscle testing. If you know, put it in the comments. Um, and then they muscle test you and they see what part of your body it is, what is stored. And they ask you to go back to a memory and you just say the first thing that comes up. And if your muscle goes weak, a long story short, my first energy healing session, it was my friend performing it. I was telling them to F off. I was so shocked. I couldn't believe like my body was shaking. I was crying. I was like, what are you doing to me? I hate you. Like it was a total trauma response about 10 years ago. And afterwards, I remember I hopped up from the table and I was like, I'm going to go to the gym. And they were like, I don't think you're going to be going anywhere. Just take it easy. And I like couldn't even lift my bag. I was so wiped out. I was so tired. But then the next day it was like something, my gut was flawless. My skin was brighter all from an energy session. We have things that get stored in our nervous system. Our nervous system is a feedback loop and it's either in fight or flight, rest or digest. We get enough things stored up in our energy field and our nervous system. It's tick, 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 tick. And when we're running at that pace, our nervous system, it never relaxes. Our immune system never gets a chance to, to strengthen, to heal. And then think back to the chronic infections on this slide, those chronic infections are going to go haywire with the nervous system that's dysregulated because there's no immune system. There's no soldiers to go after them, right? Wait, I see the chat. Who knows what I'm talking about? NET. Yep. NET. And then it's closely connected to the emotion code, which in my energy healing um, practice, and I now certify practitioners in it, which we're doing in February, by the way, if you have any interest, just send me a message. We use principles of NET, emotion code, hypnosis, quantum touch. It's everything combined. We can talk about that at a different time, but essentially I went through enough energy healing, enough channeled through me that there's a way to do this that I think is like perfect, the perfect blend for all clients, customers, patients, friends, family. Okay. The last part, yep. With autoimmunity is anger turned inward or feelings turned inward. I was watching a documentary and they were talking about, it was about trauma by, um, Gabor Mate. Is that his name? And this was a while ago and long story short, they were giving, felons, prisoners in an ACE score test. So adverse childhood events, they had these prisoners lined up on the line and they read, you know, I think there were eight questions maybe. And they said, if this ever happened to you, or you've ever felt this way, step forward. And everyone who was in imprisoned for a felony or crime had at least six out of the eight questions answered. Yes. I'm doing the test with them in my head. Most scored six, seven or eight. And I scored like seven and a half. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. So then I started doing some more research and those with autoimmune disease have high adverse childhood event scores. You can have a really great family. I have a really great family. They're wonderful people. If you know them, you love them. And like, we all went through some hard stuff, right? Like people are never perfect. So here's what happens as children. We see someone we love who is an imperfect soul here on earth going through a human experience and they hurt us. They go through some things, right? And as a child with a limited understanding, the child either believes that that person they love is a bad person or that they are a bad person. And what, you know, happened was meant to happen to them. They start to internalize this. So criminals, felons, 
who, people who are imprisoned, you know, they had a high, they had a really tough, tough childhood. They took their anger and they turned it outward and they maybe hurt someone, killed someone, robbed, blah, blah, blah. We don't have to get into it. Right. Us autoimmune gals and guys, we took that energy and we are like, no, 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 I'll hold it. I'll keep it in here. They're not bad people. I love them. I don't want to hurt anyone with my pain. And we tuck it inside and we stuff it long enough that what happens? We start to have disease. So it's super important to understand that if you are struggling with symptoms of autoimmunity, there is, there's another part that has to do with adverse childhood events. And I have no doubt that will come up in its own way in your healing journey. So your symptoms, they're a misalignment right there. Your soul is being like, Hey girl, because for me, you know, we can get really scientific and there is a physical chronological order of things where, you know, you get a chronic infection, you have enough stress, you're not eating well, you get on birth control, blah, 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 blah. Right. But also I firmly believe and have seen this happen that in our healing journey, why do we all of a sudden get an autoimmune condition? Or why do we all of a sudden start having these issues? It's a message from our soul to wake up, to rise. We we're going through some sort of awakening. And I really, really believe just have walked, walking through, walking through this with clients, with friends, with family over the last decade and helping them heal their autoimmune conditions. I'm like, yep, it's your time to awaken. Anytime there's a health crisis, there's also a soul awakening and your soul knows the way to heal. That's why you're here. You know, you're going to get something from this class that's going to inspire you and put you on your journey, or this will be the thing that helps you. Either way, your soul knew to bring you here tonight. And I'm so glad. So how did we get here? Well, as women, our sensitivities have been invalidated as broken bodies. Oh, your body is just attacking itself. Oh, you know, I felt super weak and inferior and I wanted to hide right? That was the persona I took on with autoimmunity. My friends were like, we haven't heard from you in eight months. Like you never leave the house. And I didn't want anyone to see me. Some people can get, and just recognize gently, if this is you, we can get wrapped up in, um, being in pain and being, getting attention. Maybe we not, we might not have gotten and maybe wanting to play on that. And it can be really hard when we are in a, a disempowered state and there's some sort of It doesn't feel like a reward, but subconsciously it's a reward. It can be hard to want to heal because let's face it, when we heal, we have to take responsibility. Responsibility is hard and the healing journey is going to be hard. And I just want to bring that up because you're going to hear a a rhetoric and a narrative from mainstream medicine that it's your body. And it's really easy to take that in and use that to just be comfortable, right? So by a show of hands, who is experienced? Being told it's just part of getting older, yep. that your symptoms um, and your labs are normal when you feel terrible. Yep. Surgery or a pill is your only option. I love the hand race, <laughs> the zoom hand race. They're great tools when we need them. I'm the first to write you a prescription as a nurse practitioner can do that. We're autonomous in the state of Kansas. It's a wonderful thing. Um, first to write a script and first to tell you how to get off of it. And an antidepressant and therapy will help your body feel better. We've all been told these things, right? And again, our doctors, our practitioners, our professionals, whether it's conventional or functional medicine, they got into this work to help you. They just haven't been given all the information. And that is what I know after many years of reflection, I am here to do is to help us create a new medical model. There's another way. It's probably going to take me my whole lifetime um, to even get some momentum, but I know there will be people like you all that help me and that people who come after me that we get things turned around. I mean, think about how much the world and society has changed in a hundred years. Like we can get this autoimmune thing turned around. Okay. What about men? Men, if you are listening to this, you've made it to the only slide. I want you to keep listening because everything will pertain to you, but here's what I need you to know guys. So women, they, I understand you're like, Hey, um, I looked on the internet and, uh, it's like 85% of autoimmune disease is chicks. So does that mean I'm a chick? It doesn't mean you're a chick unless you want to be a chick. The large majority with autoimmune conditions are women, but men have these issues too. I call them my gifted men. And let me tell you, I have some of the biggest, um, like dudes, dudes 
of clients ever with autoimmune conditions. Like they're like, Jenny, you can't tell anyone I've been here seeing you doing this energy healing stuff and eating this, and drinking that. And like, they're just, they're the biggest bros, right? They're my gifted men. Mm -hmm. Why? Their energy field is very open, very sensitive. Pathogens can get in. Their nervous system is sensitive. So what would have, might not have been, you know, a grade A trauma to someone else was to their nervous system. And if you have autoimmune disease, you have spiritual gifts. I promise. I have a podcast episode on that. You can listen to it. For men, if you have autoimmune disease, you are a gifted man. I think of the, when I was in high school, in middle school, there was like a gifted group at school and one of my best friends was in it. And they had a class, I think every other day for one hour where they would go in this room and they would get to do all these gifted kid things. And they were all like in there because they were really special and really smart. And I just thought it was so cool. I would be like learning the home row in my computer class, like peering over the little divider being like, what are they doing in there? That is so cool. Men with autoimmune disease are like those gifted students. You have extra abilities. You have an extra tentacle in the world. You don't have to understand what I'm saying right now, but I promise you there's something about you that you'll notice animals respond to you. Women feel, for the most part, feel safe with you. Children really like you. You just have a way with people that maybe you notice your brothers, your dad, your guy friends don't really have. It's hard to draw parallels if you're new to this information right away. I just want you to hear and hear and hear and hear again. You have something special that I want you to keep. Now, what about, it says, what a boot men. I put, what a boot men. It's, I put two O's in that about. Okay. Um, but here are the things that I usually see with men with autoimmune. Thyroid conditions. It's really not hard to get a thyroid condition. If you, thyroids are like canaries in the coal mine. They're our most sensitive, one of our most sensitive organs. They're one of the first to haywire in the body. So if like you're drinking tap water, um, you've got some, food intolerances in your diet, you're under some stress, then thyroid conditions are one of the first things to pop up. So it's not that you're weak. Okay. Psoriasis or eczema. That's a very guys who hold it in their skin's going to start to talk. Right. And then there's some root causes to their depression. Anxiety is huge. A lot of women, um, our inflammation presents on the outside. So think like weight gain, puffy eyes. We just look kind of rough. Men can hold it together physically quite a bit, but we're going to notice depression, anxiety, and internal inflammation or heart disease start to speak first. Number four for guys, fatigue, unexplained inflammation, um, loss of libido, just kind of a meh feeling, dark circles, a little well, um, weight in their belly, belly in their weight, and then a large population of bodybuilders. Most of you who are watching this, I for guys, I know there will be several on this call or watching the replay, our bodybuilders have been DMing with you. And here's what happens. Say, I'm going to talk to you as if you've taken testosterone boosters or any kind of exogenous hormone support, right? When you are putting your body under lots of stress and you're entering that HPA axis with your adrenals, the hormones kind of do, 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 start to tip and go in the wrong direction, right? So guys, especially in the bodybuilding community, because of the stress on their body, some of the diets that are select to them, and then whether they have or haven't taken testosterone or any kind of DHEA or anything like that, something's out of line. I want to tell you gentlemen that you can have in ladies, this is true. You can have your muscles and heal your body. So don't worry, <laughs> help guys all the time, but I really, I do see you and it's really hard for these guys who have been ripped out of their minds, feeling on top of the world, and then they start to crash with something like autoimmune disease, we can turn it around. And then guys, here's what I need you to know. You're going to heal faster. I'm going to talk to the ladies today about a 12-week program, if that's something they feel like they need. Gentlemen, you can do a 12-week program. I don't offer it in a group setting because women, we just, we're going to be talking about our womenly stuff. You probably can't resonate. You'll heal faster. Just set up a one-on-one -on -one with me. It probably won't take us that as long as a female, we'll just do a couple sessions. We'll get you in a good spot. So I want you to guys, I want you gentlemen to know that I see you, I hear you, you can heal. And I understand that you're not a huge majority of this autoimmune population. Okay. So we recognize what autoimmunity is. We understand how we got here and we adapt to the three pillars. Here's a message that came to me during a plant medicine ceremony that I'll never forget and has really helped me in my teachings to my clients. I was always under the impression that we are our bodies. Like we're one with our body, right? Like body, mind, spirit connection. 
this was not what I was shown and told and truly believe from God. We lease our bodies. Okay. So we are, I, t- I talked about it earlier. We're in energy. We're a soul. We're a whatever makes sense to you. Right. And we're chilling in this meat suit. We're chilling in this human body. Our bodies belong to God, belong to nature, just like a tree or just like the ocean or just like plant life or not that say we're plants, but there's something in nature that we understand has its own little like governed by God category. And here comes a soul and we are like the drivers in a car, right? So our soul just inserts into this body, which is just a meat suit or a car. Body is car, soul is driver. And in the medical world, it's like the salesman at the dealership will tell you your car is broken, always needing costly repairs instead of teaching you how to drive it and fix it. So we've never been taught how to drive our cars. We're just told, oh, you know what? You got to faulty this. Let's charge you this and fix it. But really, you truly can heal your body from a different paradigm. And I'm going to show you in these next few slides, the research, hang on with me, the research studies, the 12 week steps, and then also a special offer for this masterclass only. But I have to teach you how to drive the car because nothing's wrong with your car. Just think about it. Like if we put enough work, think of like an old clunker. If you put enough work into that old clunker, it'll be drivable again. Some people are like, nah, it's totaled. It's not worth it. But I promise you, you you get one clunker for your whole life. It can be fixed. We can do enough work into that car that it can be fixed. And our spirit governs the physical body. This is the good news. Here's what I mean. I am of the crazy notion and belief now proven by science. If you know Dr. Joe Dispenza's work, if you've watched the documentary Heal, you can start to gather some of this, but our spirit governs the physical body. Meaning, simply put, if you believe you can heal, if you can feel it, if you can see it, if you can taste it, if you can trust it, you will. Your spirit, your energy dictates the physical body. What you think, feel, believe, and work with energetically trickles down to manifest into the physical, right? It's just like if you're carrying a thing of water and you're like, I'm going to spill, I'm going to spill, I'm going to spill, and you spill, well, yeah, versus I have this, I'm calm and steady, I can move forward. And I do believe, and I do understand if you're in the, the throes of your illness, if someone would have told me, Jen, just believe you can heal and you will, I'd been like, well, that's great. Believe you can heal and then let's back it up with the evidence-based steps. Okay. But you have to have that belief. People who don't believe, I'll be honest with you. They don't heal. They, they have issues along the way and that can be a work in progress. Okay. So let's get into the three pillars of how to heal autoimmune disease backed by my research. And pillar number one is anti-inflammatory nutrition. So think of every bite of food as medicine. (sighs) Deep breath here before we talk about nutrition. Mm. It's so touchy, right? And so many of us have been through every kind of freaking diet on the planet and it didn't freaking work, right? Right. I promise you, nutrition is something I think it's like, besides, as my fiance would say, being able to talk to walls for hours, um, why I have a podcast and like to do these masterclasses, my gift is nutrition for people and their hormones. Like there's an intuitive ability to look at your labs, to know what you need and bring in the evidence and I'm going to show you what's great for autoimmune disease and what isn't to help you heal with nutrition. And it's foolproof. All my clients heal with the right food. You don't have to be perfect. You just have to be consistent and we have to find what works for you. And every bite of food you take is medicine or poison. Now, when you heal your autoimmune symptoms and you're in a remission state, like I am, I have a lot more flexibility with my nutrition. And actually when I was sick a couple of weeks ago and had this lingering cough, I was brought back to how it used to be for me. Cause I had this really nasty virus coming back from the Dominican Republic. And I was like, Oh wow. The things that, you know, the eating out and the, the fun things I like to do, the sushi and mom's symptomless desserts and all these things that used to really bother me. I had that remembrance, but your body will heal pretty quickly and you can have much more flexibility in your nutrition in that remission stage. So if you feel a little constricted and you feel a little bit of that lack coming on a little bit of that, those walls caving in, as I talk about foods that aren't going to serve you in your nutrition, just remember it's for a season. We have to clean out the body and then you can have a more normal and flexible eating. 
So here are three research studies. Yay. Okay. Look, we have really great, um, nutrition has a lot of evidence. It's the one area of medicine that I remember my, um, dad's gastroenterologist was like, just straight up told him to his face. Maybe this is funny to me. Maybe it's, this is new information for you. So I don't mean to make light of it, but he was like, no, you, what you eat doesn't affect your ulcerative colitis. My dad was on infusions for years and years and years and years and years and medication. He's now off of everything symptom-free with nutrition and some peptides. It's so amazing. And his doctor is like, what you eat will not heal it and will not make it worse. If you have inflammatory bowel disease of any kind, you know, that's a lie. Okay. So autoimmune disease from the thyroid to the bowels, to the lupus, to the nervous system. Why can I clump all autoimmune diseases together? Because they remember all the things I talked about, the chronic infections, the nutrient deficiencies, the hormone imbalance, the nervous system dysregulation, the anger turn inward, the high ACE scores, all of those things are present. <clears throat> it's like a chocolate chip cookie recipe, right? Everyone here with all these different kinds of autoimmune conditions is a chocolate chip cookie. Now, one baker might make it this way. One baker might make it this way. But if I'm an expert in chocolate chip cookies and you give me your recipe, I'm going to know how to bake your cookie, right? So this is why you can be confident that these studies do apply to you because everything we're looking at pertains here. Okay. I have what I need to read you. Um, instead of reading you the whole study, I have some notes. It's on my phone. So I'm going to be looking down a little bit, but I want to talk about this study here, influence of dietary habits on oxidative stress markers and Hashimoto's thyroiditis, thyroiditis. I don't know why in research, surely my research article, it's going to be a little wordy, but it's literally called changing the medical model for autoimmune women. Like sometimes we just got to make things hard to sound smart. I don't really know. I missed the memo on that, but basically what this is saying, it's like Hashimoto disease and thyroid or Hashimoto's thyroid disease and diet ready, go. Okay. A diet high in animal products, meat and dairy promotes thyroid autoimmunity, eating more plants, lowers oxidative stress and protect protects against thyroid autoimmunity. Let me say that in a different way. This study here and spoiler alert, I'm not a proponent for you to be completely vegan. You can do whatever you want with your nutrition. I'll explain and help you guide to find your best habits for you. This study here looked at autoimmune thyroid disease and they were like, oh, hey, one co cohort ate a lot of meat and a lot of dairy and their autoimmune thyroid numbers went up. The other cohort ate a lot of plants and their autoimmune thyroid disease numbers went down and they had less measurable oxidative stress. Cool. That's good information. Helpful with autoimmune, right? The next study that I want to look at is improvement of inflammation and pain across three months exclusion diet and rheumatoid arthritis patients. Notice some similarities here. So they looked at RA, rheumatoid arthritis, for three months and they put them on a privative diet without meat, without lactose, dairy, and without gluten. So we have one variable difference here, right? Both autoimmune diseases. They saw a decreased number of circulating leukocytes. I'll talk about that in a minute. Neutrophils and HSC reactive protein levels resulting in better control of inflammation and improved symptomatology. So they took some peeps with worth RA for three months. They took away meat, gluten, dairy. And then they saw decreased number of circulating leukocytes. So their white blood cells, their immune system calmed down. There was less infection to fight. Every time we take a bite of food, it feeds an infection, right? So they took away some of these foods that are feeding infections, namely uh, gluten and dairy, the big two meat. We can talk about that. It's, it's gray. It's not black or white. And they took away the leukocytes. The leukocytes went down after they took away these foods. Neutrophils. Those are new infection white blood cells or immune system properties, right? If your neutrophils are super high, if you have a brand new infection, so their leukocytes, their neutrophils, and then their HSC reactive protein, their CRP, that's a level of inflammation. That's a level of how bad your body hurts. If you have food intolerances and that went soaring down in three months, just from this diet. And the peeps in the study were like, Hey, I feel better. And my inflammation's down. Great. So we know from these two studies alone, that nutrition's a really big thing, right? Epstein-Barr virus and systemic autoimmune diseases. This study here shows that EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, can cause chronic relapsing infections. Yes, it can. It's a real big booger. EBV infection of epithelial cells has been linked to systemic lupus. It's an autoimmune disease. And Sjogren's syndrome. It's an autoimmune disease. 
So they're saying, hey, we found Epstein-Barr in these kinds of cells, and it resulted in these two autoimmune conditions. And it didn't study all the autoimmunities. Then they said, okay, there's Epstein-Barr infection in B cells. And then they noticed people who have the Epstein-Barr in their B cells have rheumatoid arthritis, multiple sclerosis, and other autoimmune conditions. So if you're like, wow, she's really greatly generalizing about viruses and chronic infections, here's where it gets specific. I promise you, if you have autoimmune disease, you have viruses. Now, as this study shows, Epstein-Barr can take up epithelial cells, B cells, thyroid cells. That's where it's going to make what kind of autoimmunity. And that's why I can say we're all chocolate chip cookies here because we all have the ingredient of chocolate chips, which is Epstein-Barr. It's just in different places. Maybe some people melt their chocolate chip cookie and it's all like a swirly chocolate chip cookie. And some people maybe do a chocolate chip cookie that's just a Hershey's kiss. And some people do a chocolate chip cookies that are mini chocolate chips. And some people have really big chocolate chips, right? I'm being ridiculous just so that you know and understand that Epstein-Barr virus is a big, big part of most autoimmune conditions, but what kind of autoimmunity is due to where it lies. Hmm. Why I put this in pillar one with nutrition, I'm not really sure, um, but I will tell you with the study, at least, I will tell you that gluten, dairy, eggs, soy, sometimes corn in the individual and some kinds of meat will, in certain quantities, will feed Epstein-Barr in individuals. And as you can see, Epstein-Barr is a big precursor to autoimmune conditions. Also, one thing we've known really long time in the research is Epstein-Barr is the precursor to Reed Sternberg cells, which is the precursor to lymphomas. That's very clear. You can look that up. That's widely known, right? So, and I do believe most cancers start as viral. That's a topic for a different day. And we have podcast episodes on that if you want to dive into that. But we know that there are foods and that there's stressors and that their hormone imbalance, all these things are feeding viruses and autoimmune is a lot of chronic viruses. Okay, so second pillar, mind-body medicine. Think nervous system, energy healing, emotions, ACE scores, all that woo-woo, foo-foo feeling stuff, right? It's important. Why? Because if our nervous system is stuck in a state of fight or flight, our immune system cannot heal. So this is pillar number two. Let's look at complementary and alternative medicine use in rheumatoid arthritis. This study showed they took yoga and meditation. These are just two options we have for nervous system and energy healing. There's so many options, right? Yoga and meditation supported pain, mood, and energy levels in patients with autoimmune disease. So they took these women with rheumatoid arthritis. They noticed enhanced relaxation, pain and spasm reduction, improved balance and sleep with an increased sense of well-being. Simply the only thing they did in the study was give them yoga and meditation. And I guarantee you the people who, the participants that reported this improvement really engaged with their yoga and meditation because yoga and meditation helps you connect to your nervous system, helps you connect to your energy field, which at the root, all of our conditions start in our energy field. And then they trickle down into the body, right? Okay. What about the mind-body connection? Not just a theory anymore. This pillar has more reviews. If you're new to research, let me explain something to you. Observational study here, randomized control study, one of the strongest studies you can get and review. These studies were written from people cohorts in their study. Reviews are when someone takes a bunch of studies. I'm kind of doing a literature review here with you now. They take all of this, all of this evidence, and then they, they gather it and they make a hypothesis. And then they talk about how the evidence supports or doesn't support that hypothesis. So in case you care about research in that way, just know these are the differences of the studies. Okay. So we talked about the yoga and the meditation and it helped rheumatoid arthritis symptoms quite a bit. What about the mind-body connection, not just a the theory anymore? This study, what I want you to know from this study is stressful emotions alter white blood cell function. White blood cells are the soldiers of autoimmune healing and are needed for viral infected cells present with autoimmunity. White blood cells, immune system in your blood, are needed for viral infected cells present with autoimmunity. We learned from the Epstein-Barr virus study that viral infected cells are part of autoimmunity. You need white blood cells to fight the viral infected 
the virus is in the cells, right? And also, if there's a virus in a cell, let's break down, let me back out of this for just a second and I'll come back in. If you think about thyroid disease, essentially the blood marker that says, oh, congrats, you have autoimmune thyroid disease is because there are antibodies. There's an immune system in your thyroid. The blood can blood test can pick that up. But when we learn that Epstein-Barr is in the thyroid and the immune system is trying to get in there from the study, the body's not attacking itself. The body's always going after an infection, right? That's why immunosuppressants work like any most, the common treatment for autoimmune is some kind of immunosuppressant because what it will do, it'll say, shut up white blood cells be quiet immune system, go to sleep. And then on your blood test, they're like, oh, it's gone away. And then you're like, yeah, I feel relieved. But then you're going to start getting other issues. Maybe if you were being treated for thyroid disease and your joints start to hurt or your hair starts to fall out because the virus is getting work worse and your adrenals are stressed trying to fight it. Right? So <clears throat> with the symptomless model of healing, we're going after the root cause. And then in this, we're like, oh, wait, but then we know gluten, dairy, and eggs in this anecdotal evidence is feeding viruses. We remove that from the nutrition for a healing period. We remove the trauma lodged in the thyroid of someone not ability to, ability to speak their truth. And then lo and behold, their progesterone levels, which we're going to talk about here in a second, we're in the gutter and progesterone, the thyroid needs progesterone to work. Oh, Nothing was wrong with your body. You're not, your, your body, your car is not broken. We're going to teach you how to drive it. So the white blood cells, the stressful emotions, trauma, nervous system, and fight or flight alters white blood cell function means, hey, if you have a hundred soldiers every day in your immune system and your nervous system is dysregulated, then maybe you only get 20 every day that come to work or maybe you only get 50 and women who cycle, I'm going to get to this. I'm like, so excited to talk to you about hormones, <laughs> women who cycle and men think of that bodybuilder community, whether you've taken exogenous testosterone or not, or DHEA or any other things, the stress on the body or even high level athletes is going to do this to your hormone levels. Cycling women, our hormones are doing, you know, during ovulation and menstruation, 40 to 80% of our immune system goes to our cycle. So these chronic infections get you know, essentially two events out of the month where they get a leg up. Now there's advantages to being a cycling woman. We don't want to take that away. Um, but do you understand? Are you starting to see, let me know in the chat, like, Hey, wait a minute. Maybe my body's not the problem after all, because when you live in a body that it feels like it's attacking you, gosh, dang, it's easy to be pissed at your body. I remember always saying out of my mouth before I understood this, my body hates me. My body's mad at me today. No, she was just talking to me. Okay. Oh, calm down, Jen. These people are going to heal. They get it. Okay. Therapeutic yoga. I just don't want anyone to feel as bad as I did for as long as I did. And I care about you. And thank you for being here. Therapeutic yoga, symptom management for multiple sclerosis. A healing protocol included yoga, meditation, relaxation techniques, breath work, visual imagery, hypnotherapy, and biofeedback was implemented by 84% of the participants in one study using just one. So 84% of the people in the study picked one of the things I just said, yoga, meditation, hypnotherapy, breath work, blah, 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 blah. They picked one all in the study experienced statistical improvement, enhanced relaxation, pain and spasm reduction, improved balance and sleep and increased sense of well-being. Something in research when it's statistically proven or important, it's, it's hard to get a number or a study to be statistically proven or important. So this study is real great. This review, if you want to go look at it on your own, you can just take a screenshot, look that up on PubMed, read the deets for yourself. Okay. Let's get to pillar three and get you all to bed here soon, especially if you're in the East coast or central California friends, you got a little bit more time. I'm sure you're just having a nice afternoon or evening. Okay. Pillar three, personalized biochemistry. I think nutrients and hormones. This is the pillar where I was like, 
<laughs> in my in my research paper, I was like, I got a lot more to say. I need to wrap it up. So I made a pillar number three. It's also the pillar where I couldn't make generalizations for the most part um, because everyone's hormones and personalized biochemistry can be a little bit different. So the first two pillars that I talked about, like it's pretty much true for everyone to different degrees. People will have different levels. Like if I run Epstein bar in your blood work, your antibodies versus your antigens, the ratio, like some people have stronger Epstein bar loads than others. Some people, you know, will have more of a gluten intolerance than a dairy. Like there's some variants, but pretty much everything I said, like kind of blanket statements, right? This is the part where it's a little personal to everyone, man to woman, woman to woman, young woman to older woman. But I'm going to read you some studies and some main points that are pretty true across the board. And you'll find yourself somewhere in here. So think nutrient levels, hormones, nutraceuticals, homeopathy, supplements, hormones. This is it. Okay. So this first study here, the correlation between vitamin B12 deficiency and autoimmune thyroid disease. That's kind of normally put. You could just say B12, Hashimoto's, and B12. What's love got to do? All right, so low B12 levels, so if someone has low B12, are inversely correlated, I mean flip-flopped, with higher values of TPO levels in the blood, indicating more active autoimmunity. So the lower the B12 in people, they found this across, this was an observational study, so they just were like, hey, Give me all the people's blood work with Hashimoto's and then also include B12 in it. And they found across the board, the lower your B12, the higher your antibodies are. So will just taking B12 cure your Hashimoto's? No, we know from the other pillars that that just ain't going to do it. But we do know that if I give you some B12, I'm going to give your immune system a couple more soldiers to go kick EBV the heck out of your B cells or your epithelial cells or your thyroid cells, right? So a little bit of information there. When you start to piece this together, right? There's no one study besides mine that I'm going to publish that will say, hey, autoimmune disease can actually be healed. Here's how you do it. But we can put together all of these studies and be like, mm-hmm. and then when you go through a symptomless program where you take this information for it and you start to heal, you're like, yeah, I can be healed. I don't know what I was thinking but you were just influenced by the masses like I was. Okay. So where am I now? Quercetin. Here it is. I put Graves disease plus quercetin supplementation. This is potential implications of quercetin and autoimmune diseases. All right. The way I say things is just a little more simple. So Graves disease and quercetin. They found Quercetin reduces rheumatoid arthritis scores, mitigating mast cell proliferation to slow neuropathologic progression and MS and decreasing oxidative stress for patients with autoimmune disease. So there's actually two studies. Who's this one by? Shen? Oh, okay, no, it's all in one. Um, Graves disease and, no, no, there's two here. And rheumatoid arthritis and MS. I gave a little bit more information, cited one study, but they're both by the same author. Basically what they're saying is they, they started giving people quercetin and they're like, hey, their rheumatoid arthritis scores are getting better. Their mast cell proliferation is slowing down and multiple sclerosis. And there's less oxidative stress for patients with Graves' disease. And the only variable they studied, the only thing they did for these people is give them quercetin, right? Pretty simple. All right. So multiple sclerosis. And that's, and this is, this kind of study is for, for all the people who told their doctor they're seeing you know, a holistic nurse practitioner or a naturopath, and they're taking supplements and their doctor rolls their eyes at them. Take them some of these studies. Okay. Or don't, or just quit seeing them and find a new doctor. The role of sex hormones in multiple sclerosis. I love this study. It is a power packed punch, right? Like right where it'll get you. So for the doctors who, and the, the, let's not make it the doctor's fault for the, for the, Paradigm that says just put women on birth control or their hormones don't matter or whatever. Remyelination. So when MS, there starts, you have a demyelination of neurons. And for MS, usually people's balance, speech, like nervous system, motor things are starting to be affected. In this study, they gave women bioidentical, it's super important, it's bioidentical. And then even more so to me that it doesn't go through your liver, trochies only, nose pills, pellet shots, creams, 
um, when it comes to hormone replacement, avoid those like the plague plant-based bioidentical trophies only that they gave these women bioidentical estradiol therapy. And then they saw that there, there was remyelination of in the nervous system when women with MS, when we go to heal autoimmune disease, what I will always promise you with the symptomless program is that we'll stop it in its tracks. A lot of times we can regain some function, but when it's something like MS, ALS, um, Lyme disease, some neurological things, Parkinson's, dementia, I'm like, there's a chance we can make it better, but likely we're going to stop it and prevent future progression. And in this study, they said, hey, give these chicks some estradiol and they're actually going to get better and not just stay the same and stop it in its tracks. And this is something we always do for autoimmune is we're looking at your estradiol levels. Okay. And then increased levels of progesterone downregulate disease associated genes in autoimmune diseases. This is from study. I don't have it on here. Run quiz 2022. Are you in D Q U I S T 2022 with multiple authors. You can look that one up, but what they're saying is the more progesterone you have, the less autoimmune disease you have in a body and women on here. If you've ever been pregnant with autoimmune disease, you're like, huh? Most for the most part, women are like, I feel a lot better when I'm pregnant. There's a reason for this. It's because of progesterone. So low hormone levels in women onset autoimmune disease Normal levels or high levels during pregnancy turn off autoimmunity. Returning hormone levels to its optimum function is crucial for healing. And men, you can experience this too. We can get your hormone levels back to a great place. Um, progesterone is not usually your, your therapy, but there's other things we can do for you. Okay. Take a deep breath. Made it through the meat. Couple extra things I want you to know. How we heal autoimmune disease. We recognize what it is. We understand how we got here. We know that our body's not attacking itself. We adopt the three pillars and we heal. So here's a sample 12 week protocol I took from a client run of the mill client journey. Everyone's look, everyone looks a little bit different. Um, it's why even in my group programs, you always have individual sessions with me or an individual touch point. And then we can lead you through, you remember the first two pillars were pretty blanket. This third pillar is where you and I need to get in there and do some digging and some personalization. So in week one, I'm always focused on detox, opening up the lymph and detox pathways and getting a vision for the person's healing. So in week one, that can look like we will set a North star vision. And I'll have you journal your, as it's present tense, like your vision of healing and your vision of like, what does it look like if your body felt freaking amazing and looked freaking amazing? Like, what is that going to be like for you? A lot of times we're so adapted to our new normal. That kind of sucks. We don't even have a vision. So a North star vision, and then we'll start a morning routine a uh, generic routine I like is lemon water, celery juice, and a smoothie. And then adaptations from that can look like lime water, a lemon balm tea that's warm, a cucumber and pineapple juice, and then some roasted sweet potatoes. Like we, this, the science behind this is a whole nother masterclass that I can teach you of, or it's in my food as medicine course that's included in my programs, but there's a science behind what we're doing in the morning with foods that are easy. Foods that take this morning routine can take you 10 minutes to prep, right? It can be really, really simple. Week two, we look at modifying your lunch and dinner according to your blood work, according to your autoimmune conditions. Like, do we have gluten here? Do we need to change out this? Like, what kind of fish might you be able to have? Do you need to go animal protein free? Would you need, you know, more protein? Are you breastfeeding? Do we need more fats? This is a little bit personalized, but there's a general protocol in the symptomless method that we set you up with. Week three is eliminating inflammatory foods in lunch and dinner, according to your blood work. So in week two, I like to bring in the good stuff and say, Hey, let's bring in some wild blueberries. Let's bring in some leafy greens. Let's up your fruit intake in week three, because I like an abundance approach. Then we might start to pull out some things that I know that are inflaming you for the time being week four nervous system, energy healing. We get right in there. We start to remove things that are your block, either I have you do this on your own, you come in for a session, we meet online, all my work can be done virtually. In the symptomless program, we have two mini retreats on an evening or a weekend that we really dive in deep and you'll leave feeling really good. 
Week five is a time to establish blood sugar stabilizing snacks. So eating every two to four hours for eight to 12 hours, if you're intermittent fasting and that's what's working for you, I like it. Um, we might tweak some things depending on your hormones. If you're a cycling, non-cycling woman, all of the research ever on intermittent fasting has been done on men. So some women are like, I'm intermittent fasting, but my cortisol's through the roof and I feel shaky and I feel just anxious. And we just bring in, maybe we have them start eating three hours or two hours sooner and it really makes a difference. And then we're focusing on glucose to stabilize your blood sugars. You need so many carbohydrates to heal. The symptomless way of healing it will be probably the most carbohydrates you've ever eaten. And you will see the less, the least inflammation and extra weight on your body than you've ever seen. It's a beautiful thing. Week six, we start to look at the pillar three with a personalized nutraceutical protocol. Do you need quercetin? Do you need B12? Do you need vitamin D? Do you need zinc? Like what are the conditions present and what things do we need to bring in to support cellular regeneration? Week seven, we're going to look at your hormones. I usually look at them a little bit sooner. We're going to look at biotentacles for you. We're going to look at um, adaptogen support, if that's what you need. We're going to look at treatments like low dose naltrexone, methylene blue, nitric oxide foundation that are from compounding pharmacies only. My rule of thumb, uh, I'm the first to write you a script from CVS if you need it, but I work with O'Brien Pharmacy in Mission, Kansas for all my nationwide clients, my worldwide people, my local people, because rule of thumb, if it's made at a compounding pharmacy, it's likely a different kind of formula. Low dose naltrexone, for example, I have a reel on it. I have, do I have a podcast on it? If not, I'll make one. I feel like I talk about it all the time. The research is there. It's so supportive for those with autoimmune conditions and you can't get it from CVS because they're making it in really large quantities. It is indicated for alcoholism, but a 200 milligram or 50 milligram dose versus a 0.5 milligram dose, essentially in a nutshell, why you sleep low dose naltrexone blocks your endorphin receptors. Your body goes, Hey, we don't have any endorphins, make more anti-inflammatory. And it encourages your body, its own natural production of anti-inflammatory. It's a beautiful thing. Um, you know, when, especially when you're doing all the food and all the things, people really notice the difference from it. So that's just one therapy that maybe you've never heard of, maybe you're already on it. And maybe you're just curious about that. We can bring on, if you want it, you never have to take it. Okay. Week eight, we're hitting up that nervous system again. There's more, your nervous system, your emotional healing will be the rest of your life, but I'm giving you the tools. I'm teaching you how I'm not teaching you to depend on me and always have to come to me for it. I'm going to give you how to do it because after this 12 weeks, um, if you don't need anything from me, great. If I manage any of your prescriptions, I'm going to see you once or twice a year. And I don't want to hear from you because I want you to be living your life feeling great. Now you don't need me week nine. We're going to monitor some progress. We're going to talk about infrared ozone rebounder therapy for the limb system bring on some heavier detox tools. We might talk about this before then, but this is a piece that we cannot let slip wayside. Week 10, usually people are ready for a deep GI and liver cleanse. And I have everything from a food only to a kit you can buy online. We find the cleanse that's right for you, your budget. Um, is it one day? Is it three days? Is it 10 days? Like what is your life like and what can we make doable? And then week 11, we weaned some medications. I had one gal in the 12 week program get off 16 medications um, in 12 weeks. That's quick and that's a lot. Usually, I would say that would be like a year's journey, but her body was just ready. She was ready and she's doing great. We revised your supplements. We implement maybe some homeopathy. I need you to have a strong vessel before we can start poking with some homeopathy. And then we might even retest your blood work that soon or it could wait. And then week 12. This is the best part. We come together at the end. If you're in a community program, if you're in a one-on-one, -on -one, you always have access to these community programs, but you're healing in community. We're sharing our stories. You know, we're talking about what's next. We're tweaking everyone's follow-up plan. And then I'll see you three, six, 12 months. Or if you're doing great, you don't need me. That's it. With the symptomless protocol, you will have results. This will work if you put in the effort and people are like, have you ever had someone this didn't work for it? Yes. Why? They didn't, they didn't implement it. And it's okay. Some people, I'll be honest with you, go through a program or go through an appointment or whatever with me, and they learn the tools and the information. And then there's a later, I'm planting a seed because then later they harvest their crop. Later they water the crop, they implement it, and then they have something, you know, some produce or some fruit to bear. So whether you heal completely in 12 weeks, which there's always more healing to do, or you heal in 12 months or, you know, 
12 years from now, that's kind of long, but I would say for every month that you've had a symptom or for every year you've had a symptom, plan on a month of healing. That's like pretty rule of thumb. This will work. The research shows us, and I have years of clinical and anecdotal evidence. If you're a research nerd, this will mean something to you. If not, just, you know, check your phone or something really quick. <laughs> We're almost done here. And I want you to listen for the special bonus. That's just for you in this class and, or the replay, um, take a screenshot of this, take a picture. I have some little nuggets. If you want to read some more studies and then this little QR code here at the bottom, you can take a picture of that and go to my references. If you want to read some of these studies for yourself, there's a lot of references on this poster project. And then this is my peacoat question. This is really, if you're into research, you'll understand it. And if not, um, you're welcome to read it and then we can just skip on over it. But what I want to say for what I'm about to offer you, I am opening. If you, some of you were here with me in the fall, my doctoral research has the opportunity for my symptomless program to be non-for-profit 70% off. And because you'll be part of this research study that I'm publishing and it's anonymous, the, the measurement tool, you fill out a five minute survey before and after the program with your mom's birthday, which I'll never know. Um, and that's it, but you get to go through the program basically free just to, you just pay what it costs for us to take you through the program and all the profit is taken off of, and you will have the results. So let me get to this with the symptomless program that will look a lot like this. You'll begin feeling like a new person within four weeks. You'll regain control over your life, over your lie. Sure, we'll go with that. And learn the tools needed to heal in 12 weeks. You will heal if you engage and participate in this program. And perfection is never required. Just your consistent best effort and patience, 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 and trust. Guys, I swear, I went through these slides like three times looking for typos. And I think you just have to present in front of people until you find them. Okay, a couple quick testimonies if you're like, I'll tell you the easiest way to read these testimonies and I won't read them word for word. Go to Google, type in Inspire Health by Jen, click on reviews. I think there's like 50 reviews and just read through all of the reviews from people who participated and you'll get the gist of what we're working with. Um, Emma here, she talks about finding her intuitive gifts and learning. I mean, everyone, if you have autoimmune disease, you have intuitive gifts. So spoiler alert there, Lynn had been through alternative and Western medicine Literally, she had seen everyone. She had spent, I think she told me around $35,000 by the time she got to me. And within, I think we had four sessions, everything was turned around over eight weeks. And then Karen, she just couldn't lose weight. She didn't feel good. Put her on a nutrition plan that was against everything she'd ever been taught. Um, she looks amazing. Her photos are actually on Google and she's even leaner now. And she has a ton of energy. She's a beautiful, brilliant woman. She's also a nurse. She's lovely. And then, Anne, we got her lupus, her liver issues, her arthritis knocked out pretty quickly and it didn't take us long at all. Okay. So if you're like, I think I want some support on this, I promise you, and this isn't a pull in your leg. I'll just say this to every masterclass. This is the last time I'll be running the research program because I'm almost to my numbers for data. I have all the people I need signed up, but we have four more spots um, in this small group of like 10 ish cohort. And we had a nice lofty group of 25 the first time making it a little bit smaller this time. And I'll tell you what you get in the program. So here's what you probably need to know. <laughs> the program, the symptomless 12 week program is $5,555. It is not that price right now. It is $1,888 because it is non-profit research. We start January 24th, the doors We'll probably close, my guess is within 48 hours of this masterclass every, after everyone watches and people sign up and we'll go January 24th through April 19th. You'll have two individual sessions, four group calls. And I've been in group programs and usually my group calls. This is a different kind of group call. You really start to lean on the other women in this program. You get to know them in the client thread and the app that we're chatting in. You get to see them. You walk alongside them. It's an amazing group. The women, when I tell you that you have intuitive gifts as someone struggling with autoimmune disease, it happens in all of these calls. I encourage you. I'm like, hey, if you're if you're having something encouraging come up for your sister, women all the time get these beautiful messages or encouragements or knowing for each other. And it's it's not just me on there telling you what to do, giving you advice, even though 
we have hot seats and everyone gets a little individual mini appointment on this call. And then there's next steps and everything we're going through together as a community. But the other women are so important. And to some degree, we will always do some kind of community, but it won't look like this again at this price. So you have two mini retreats, one's on a Friday, one's on a Sunday, click this little QR code, the dates are on there. And if you are not able to make it in person, say you're on the other side of the world, um, we had half of the program was zoomed in for these and they had the same experience. I'm really um, well-versed in the hybrid approach and it's a beautiful, beautiful experience. We do uh, energy healing circles and it's hard to explain in the physical, but just come and experience it and you will see. The trademark courses, you have a course on food as medicine, a course on energy as medicine, and a course on how to heal your hormones. Those are all recorded by me. They're about five to seven hours long each. You have them for a lifetime and they, you can go to my website and see them individually priced. They are together more than the cost of the program. So the program's already a steal and you have two individual sessions for a group, two mini retreats, three courses, unlimited support chat. I'm in there all the time with you guys during the 12 weeks, unlimited yoga, virtual or in-person community, community, community. I have clients who join this, even though they're already feeling well from last time because they want the community and clients who are coming back to join this because they just want the community. Optional lab testing. So the cost is 1,888. You can add on blood work. I was talking to one of you today. She just wants possibly her hormones tested. So that'd be $150. Or if you want all the blood tests under the sun, you can get the program for 2,222. And for those who I've already worked with and seen, there's a couple of you for labs, then you can just use that credit for your follow-up labs at like the end of the program. We take payment plans. It's on the bottom of the sales page here. You got to scroll all the way down. My team knows how to build a great sales page to get the payment plans. We take HSA, FSA, it's 70% off. And there's four seats left. So I love, love, love for you to be one of the four. And then this is just the discount. So you can see it with your own eyeballs. Here is the offer for this masterclass only. Okay. Are you ready? So because you are on this call and because I value your time and your energy live for anyone on this call, you can, if you join the program at any point now or a year from now, you can email support at inspirehealthbygen.com, or you can send us a message wherever you can get a hold of us. And you can say, Hey, I was on that masterclass or I watched that masterclass replay. The code is masterclass. How easy is that? And you can gift a friend or a family member, someone you love a 30 minute free consult with me. And so usually it's like, this is why I do this. I wish my husband could hear this or, <clears throat> oh man, my daughter, she's a college student. She really needs to talk to you. I know she doesn't have the resources. Why do I do this? Because I know like my mom, my dad, my sister, my fiance, my extended family, my friends, everyone started to like want to get in on this and want to heal and want to feel better. And a lot of times, especially if you're in the same family, you're going to be using some of the money for you. You're going to have, you're going to be able to help this person. If they're close to you, I know you're going to be able to help them. So I will see them for free for 30 minutes and go over their testing, go over their intake forms and address their issues completely free. You just have to email us and be like, Hey, and we'll look and see if you join the program. And then you can use, they can use this masterclass bonus right now, or they can use it a year from now. Okay. So go ahead. If you're even interested and you want to bookmark the page, we have four spots left. Last time when we did the masterclass within 48 hours, the four spots were gone. Um, you can take a picture of this little QR shimma dig, scroll to the end of the page and you'll see the payment plan options or the labs or no labs. If you have questions, um, I'm going to hang out here for a moment and then inspirehealthbygen.com, click on Jen's autoimmune research. That's also how you can find it. And I'd love, love, love to have you in the program. And then if, you know, now's not the right time for you or say you have two options for you. Now's not the right time. Reach out in the future. We won't offer this program again, but we do have offerings. My new client session is 899. You can tell with the price difference of the program, it's, the program is a pretty good option. And if you're not sure about the program, you can book a discovery call. I believe, ooh, I don't think I have any more openings until the end of the month. Um, 
but you could send an email. How about this? Send me an email. Um, anywhere you can get a hold of us on the website, inspirehealthbygen.com, scroll to the bottom, say, I want to ask Jen about the program. I need a 15 minute discovery call because I believe the first opening I have is on the 23rd or 24th. And I promise you the spots will be gone by then. So I will fit you in um, off of the books. If you have a question about this and you want to join the program, but just know once the program's filled, I won't be able to take any more discovery calls. Okay. So I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to hang out here. If you guys have any questions, put them in the chat, unmute. I'm going to stay here for just a moment and see if you have anything else that you need. I'm going to read some of these. Do you want to tell me, this is what I'd like to go to bed with tonight. I'm <laughs> fresh in my mind. One thing new that you learned or one thing that excited you or surprised you tonight in this class if you don't have any questions and if that is all you have leave me your one thing you can sign out you can get to bed at a good time and then I will be anticipating hearing from any of you and then seeing your signups and then if you need a discovery call again just reach out